this is update 5 and, and I've made a few changes. Last week I kind of had a proper test with uh, driving with a motor uh, moving along and I encountered a few kind of accuracy problems, a bit of wobble and I was going to fix that with a second drive motor but I think also so a lot of the problem comes down to the, probably the tolerances and how um, exact I was making everything. I was adding a little bit of play here and there to aid with development um, but I think it was also producing a lot of problems. Um, so a tiny little bit of wobble here and there on a few different parts was adding up to something uh, potentially unacceptable for this. So I've been redesigning a few bits and pieces to try and improve that. I've also decided to make a big change to the X carriage that moves back and forwards. Uh, rather than having a single solid piece, I've completely kind of redesigned that. Um, primarily from an accuracy point of view, uh, but also it will hopefully aid in kind of getting this thing built. So, I mean, that used to take uh, over kind of three and a half, about three and a half hours to print that unit. And so if I wanted to make a slight change somewhere, it would take almost an entire evening before I could try it again. And so this time round, I divide it into parts, each of which is about an hour in length. So it's, it's a much quicker kind of iterative process to kind of get through this development cycle. And I'm going to run through some of the, uh, the little kind of bits and pieces and changes that I've been making now. So there were a number of accuracy problems with the, the kind of configuration I had. Another uh, was due to a few compromises I made, uh, a couple of decisions like that. Um, and the first one of which was um, the kind of placement of these bars here. The, originally I had a, a very kind of tight fit into here. And if I wanted to dismantle it, it was really awkward to do so. So I increased the height of this, uh, the size of these holes, and I capped off the back. Previously it was just straight through. And so it meant it was a tight fit, it doesn't really matter. So I made the decision to increase the width, cap the back, and then it was a fixed length. So the lengths had to be exact, but when it was put in place, so you kind of mount this in, thread it in, screw these two ends down, and these would then kind of almost just loosely kind of fit in between. It did, they didn't need to be exact. So this one here has a bit of wobble in it. And that introduces some problems. If uh, this is kind of moving around, it's got some sideways wobble, it's almost going to have, certainly have a little bit of up and down wobble, which was going to cause problems. So I've started to work on a uh, kind of a clamping arrangement here. So all I've done is added a slit between the two and uh, kind of a nut and bolt, kind of a captive nut in there, a bolt that runs through. That then tightens up and kind of crushes this down. This isn't finished yet, this is the second version of this, and I'm still trying to get the, the right kind of um, the spacing, uh, the right kind of setup here for this to tighten. Because it needs to drag down from the top and it needs to then pull in from the sides to kind of bind onto this, and it's not doing that enough yet. I can go all the way and it's still very tight. I, because, um, because I've got the kind of central shaft running through here, I don't have much distance to play with, so. I've got uh, I've only got one or two sizes or lengths of these bolts at the moment to work with, so that's why I'm having to pack up here. Obviously, the final thing I'd kind of cut them down to whatever length they need to be, and so that's uh, it's going to take a little bit, a couple more revisions I think to get that right and clamp that down. Um, this is the, the kind of method you'd see on a lot of the, the open source kind of 3D printers you kind of, for clamping down onto brackets. So. Um, it is clearly a decent solution, uh, this idea of clamping down. I just need to get mine up to kind of scratch with theirs. This is one of the other pieces where I've had some accuracy problems. This is the X carriage that moves along and it has some linear bearings, kind of push fits, or just kind of pushed into the, the ends here. And that um, seemed working reasonably well, but again, in order to get these out and remove them for testing, uh, this, the gap hasn't been particularly tight so they didn't get stuck which again it's not that obvious this time around so I couldn't notice that there was nothing that notable but there's going to be some kind of play back and forwards so I think late one night I kind of had an idea and I kind of came up with a couple of designs to clamp this down the design I came up with um, a lot of 3d printers on the markets they're using cable ties in various places now I guess my initial reaction was cable ties didn't seem a particularly great solution, but um, they're, they're used, they're used on some decent machines, and so I thought I'd give it a go. And so I built this. This is a 
basically I had a, I built a block piece here, uh, mounted it through and then just sliced it in half. So this is a kind of a block with kind of recesses in here. Don't know how it'll come out, but um, it is designed with kind of uh, kind of mounting kind of lugs in the side here and in the centre. So these fit quite snugly. And then through the all these little holes here, cable ties run around and clamp. And in addition to that, I've also got some mounting holes in here. So uh, four mil holes run through there, and inside this block there is a. Uh, a hexagonal space for a captive nut to go in, so this would then bolt onto another piece. Uh, presumably I would have made cutouts for these on the other side. And that works really well, that does. It, it um, kind of fits on to the shafts, slides really nicely. And then put the end back on to stabilise it. And get a really nice movement. It's tight, it's rigid, it, it's not loose, and it's easy enough to kind of get in, get out to test with. And so that seemed pretty decent, but I again had another, kind of tried another revision on this. Um, it was took a little while to print with all these little holes, so I tried to simplify it a little bit. And I came up with the idea of mounting two onto each other. So this is the second piece. Uh, basically the same as before, but just doubled up. So if I move the top here, you see it just sits in between, and you can hopefully better see, although the contrast here is not great, the kind of the, the mounting kind of points there, so they sit, whoop, another one drops, so it sits in its cavity quite nicely. And so, and four of them just drop in, pit, pit seats on the top, and it bolts together. And again, that solution works really well. A pair of these will print in an hour, and it's uh, prints these at a much higher quality than they have been for like, these prototypes, and they're really nice little dense solid parts, and they come together quite well. And so that was a pretty successful piece, and I think it's certainly a lot better than this one. Uh, it's neater, it's tidier, it's got better mounting options onto everything else, and um, it's uh, only a little bit longer to print, it's better in terms of consumables, uh, just a significant improvement over that one. And obviously it works just as well. These fit quite tightly in here. And uh, I guess if I did need them to fit a little bit better, what I could do is reduce the height of these inner bits here. So it kind of clamped down tighter onto this. Uh, but that hasn't really been necessary so far. And so obviously that uh, forms only a small part of it. So the original arrangement here that represents that middle segment. So onto here, I then have another two modules, parts, uh, the bottom piece here with the uh, anti-backlash nut and the top segment up there. And so I've designed this second part here. It's gone through a couple of changes so far. Um, my uh, red filament had been out now for a couple of weeks, stuck on the printer and the moisture had got in, so I prints were starting to fail, so I've switched over to this grey and um, hopefully the rest of the red can be salvaged if the, moist and the moisture kind of slowly seeps out, but for now everything's over to grey. And so this uh, piece here uh, lines up, bolts together, and that gives me exactly the same as that piece there. And that so far is working really well. The idea for clamping these together is to run a bolt all the way through the second piece here and then the next piece up here will have to be some kind of large block arrangement and I'm thinking what I will do is uh, basically in this piece here uh, kind of put a cavity in them and kind of drop a cavity in here which would allow me to put a captive nut inside I can then bolt up through and lock into it so that um, hopefully should then pass either side of here. I won't need to worry about clearance around there because it won't get up that far. And uh, that should solve that problem. And so obviously by having, it's, it's basically three segments or four separate pieces here. And it means I can update or change as I go. Each part is more accurate, it's more refined. And in general, it should be a much better solution. I'm not at the stage where I can fully test this yet. I still need to design this upper segment, um, but hopefully that will 
happen this week. <laughs>